Hello everybody. Alright, so today I'm going to be showing you the tips and tricks that I know as a shock OTP for six years. Now, I might miss out on one or two tips or tricks here and there, so if I do, feel free to uh, write them down in the comment section down below. And let's get right into the video. Now, before I actually show you the more advanced tricks, I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page and that everyone knows every single interaction with Shuckle. So what I mean by this is, for example, if you queue and you hit a bank stab, that means your auto attack is going to be a 130% crit. Now, if you, for example, have Infinity Edge and you queue and then backstab, that means it's going to deal 165% of damage. If you want to know more about the math, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. But uh, if you, for example, have a real crit that is based on crit chance, that is going to be 210% damage. Now, this damage only applies to your backstab damage, to your Q damage, and to your auto attack damage. It does not apply to things like Sheen, so keep that in mind. Another really important thing is to always try and keep your E if you can. When your E is ready to cast, it has a built-in slow on your auto attacks, so make sure to use that as much as you can. Now, the other reason you might want to keep your E at all times is because it has an execute damage. What that means is, if the enemy target is below 30% HP, your E actually does increase damage. So, it's really good to keep your E for the slow and for the extra damage. Now, if you know you can use your E a second time, and you don't need the slow, feel free to use it right away, but usually you want to use it as an execution. Now the clone works in very mysterious ways, but there's one thing that's pretty much always certain. He will copy your stats apart from movement speed. Now this is really useful to use the Hail of Blades interaction, so when you have the bonus attack speed from Hail of Blades and then you ult, your clone is going to keep it permanently. The clone will also copy items, stuff like Wits End or Bork for example, and it will do the honor damage, just keep in mind that the clone only does 60% of the honor damage. As of recording this video, for example Sheen is bucking the clone and he can't actually proc it, but just keep in mind that this might vary from item to item. Now some of you guys might not know this, but you can actually choose the spawn location after your ult. Now this is really useful, you can actually reposition yourself when trying to assassinate a target after they flash for example. Or do some other cool tricks I'm going to show you later. With the Shaco ult you can pretty much dodge every single ability in the game except for tethers and ignite. Tethers is for example a Leblanc chain or Karma W. If the clone walks away too far away from you, eventually it will snap back to you. In combination with Q, this can make for some sick outplays, trick an enemy into thinking it's you. Usually when you Q and then ult, you have to choose your spawn location depending on your cursor. Now if you Q R instantly, your clone will always spawn in front of you, making for some sick outplay potential. Now even though Prowler's Claw isn't too common anymore in Shaco, a cool trick is that you can actually use Prowler's Claw during invest and it doesn't break your stealth. Now I get this question quite frequently and people always ask me, let's be how does Baron or Dragon attack the clone and not you? Uh, and it's very simple. Because Baron and Dragon always attacks what's closest. So if I move myself closer to Baron, it will attack me. If I move my clone closer, it will attack the clone. Makes sense, right? As I said before, this also works on Dragon. Just make sure to walk the clone into the Dragon and then get from max auto attack range into auto attack range and you will pretty much always have the Dragon attack the clone. Very simple. Another question people always have is how do I place a box down on Baron without it dying? And this is very simple. The trick is basically to walk at max auto attack range into the Baron, and then at that range of your auto attack range, you place a box down. This very spot is what I like to use, but you can pretty much use any spot. Now the same thing obviously works on Dragon. You just kind of want to make sure that you or the clone actually tank before the box uh, appears, because otherwise, if you are not close enough, then it will just attack the box. Luckily on Dragon, it's a bit easier because it doesn't actually kill targets that are too close, like on Baron, or pushes them away. So this makes it a bit easier. Now the next trick I'm going to show you is usually considered as clone joking. As you can see in the video, uh, basically what you want to do is make the enemy think that your clone is the real Shaco and basically have it run away and then have them chase it and like try to kill it and then, you know, eventually just waste your time. And it usually allows you to get away or get some cheeky kills like this. Another tip I can give you is queuing to very awkward locations that people probably won't expect you in. Now, usually they would expect me to run towards river here or queue towards river, but I actually queue backwards and I queue into the bush that is next to the uh, tier 2 tower on top lane. Now this they probably won't check because it's very unlikely for me to queue there. Another cool queue trick is what I like to call the reverse queue. You walk into one direction, then do a step backwards, but queue forwards again. People usually expect you to have queued backwards because they thought you failed. There's a couple of spots on Summoner's Rift where you can enhance your queue range for free. If you're interested in that video, uh, you can see it below or you can click the annotation on the top right to get there right away. Now because you can choose the spawn location of your cell, you can actually spawn over very small walls. Now if you put the cursor away from the wall and spam Alt plus right mouse button to move the clone over the wall, you can actually have him go over the wall instead of you. I also have a video on all the different spots where you can have your clone or yourself go over the wall, so if you're interested in that, again, click on the annotation on the top right or check out the video you can see below. 
Now when it comes to stealing dragon, whenever there's a blast cone, make sure to use that one to get in. Never use your Q or your R if a blast cone is available, unless you need to make sure that they don't see you. Because this allows you to get out in two ways. You can actually get out using your Q, or you can get out using your R. Now, there's a couple more tricks to this, uh, especially if the blast cone isn't up. There's two ways you can enter. You can enter using your Q, but then you have to use your R to get out, or you can actually use your R to get in, and then you can use your Q to get out. Now, depending on the situation, you might want to use R to get in if you're worried about dying or having a shutdown, for example. But if you have your Q ready, and you might be a bit behind already anyways, then Q is usually the reliable way to actually steal the dragon, while R getting out might not be as reliable. To ult into the pit, you have to be in a very specific location, and then all you have to do is press the R key while having your mouse over the wall, and in you go. Now ulting out of the pit is the exact same scenario, just have your mouse over the wall and be in a specific location and everything should work. On Baron there's a little crack in the wall that you can use to line yourself, and then have the mouse cursor over the wall, and press R. And again, use the crack to line yourself, and R over the wall from the inside, very simple. But there's a really cool trick with Shaco Q because it has a 0.125 second cast time. If you get CC'd during that cast time, your Q will go off anyways and you basically just ignore, for example, a Thresh Hook or a Blitzcrank Hook. It will still stun you at your new location, for example Morgana Q, but you will not actually get your you know, Q cancelled in any way. As you can see, this also works against Dragon Knockback, for example, which is very helpful to do Dragon on your own. But again, this works with pretty much every ability. Just keep in mind that it will not stop the CC from working. It will just not cancel your jump. Another neat little trick is that you can block skill shots with your box. Now this is really, really helpful when, for example, running away or trying to save a teammate. For example, in this case, a Lee Sin Q, which actually turns out to give us a double kill in this scenario. If I didn't block that Lee Sin Q, he could have turned out to be a one for one or maybe even a 0 for two for the enemy team. So this was really crucial here. This right here is actually my favorite combo. It doesn't always work and you might not always be able to one-shot them cleanly, but usually two or three auto-attacks will do the trick. The combo is E into Q auto-attack, or just more auto-attacks if needed. Now some people actually complain to me about how they can't attack the Nexus or Inhibs with the Shaku clone. Now this has a very simple reason, and the reason is that, well, the clone is bugged, like very bugged. So the way to attack the Inhib with the clone is to use Alt and right mouse button. The R key does not actually work. So if you press Alt and right mouse button, you're able to attack. Another cool trick you can use is you can place the box onto the blast cone, hit the blast cone and have the box jump into an enemy. Now that can turn into, for example, a fear that wins a teamfight or result in a free kill like this. If you aggro a camp at a jungle and then you Q, the blue buff or the red buff or whatever camp usually doesn't do much, it just stands still until it de-aggros. Now, if you actually Q and you start seeing the blue buff moving somewhere, that actually means an enemy has to be nearby, even if you don't have vision of it, so be careful. This is probably the most useless, but also the most fun trick for Shaco. It's really useful because it doesn't do anything other than, well, look cool, but it's very simple. You can have your clone actually permavorm dance. What you want to do is you want to make him dance, and then as soon as he's about to get up, you actually use Alt and right mouse button to start moving him, and boom. Your clone is stuck in a warm dance animation. Congratulations. If you queue and instantly after press TP, you can actually TP while being invisible. Now sadly they removed the interaction with the recall, so you can't actually recall invisibly anymore, but TP still works. When trying to siege or trying to take towers, make sure to wait until you place your box down once the cannon actually has aggro. Because the cannon is very healthy, it takes a very long time for it to die, and because the tower always aggros the box after the next minion dies, make sure to use it once the cannon has aggro. When going for a solo dive, usually you want to place your box down first, then step into the tower, and then use your ult to dodge a tower shot, your box will draw aggro, and then your clone should draw aggro. You can use this to go for a solo dive, but keep in mind that if you hit the enemy champion, you will always draw aggro. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Now there are some very, very, very niche kind of tricks that you can use that I personally in my six years have never used, so I don't feel like they're worth mentioning. One of them, for example, being if Shaco hits level 6 out of vision of the enemy champions and he uses his ult, the clone will actually have the level of when Shaco was last seen. But again, that is so niche that I don't honestly recommend using it or have ever used it myself. Obviously, there's a couple more of these niche tricks, but again, I don't feel like mentioning them. If you do have any tricks though, again, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Apart from that, I appreciate all of you guys checking out the video. If you haven't already, check out my Twitch and my Discord, link is in the description down below. Hit the notification bell on the YouTube sub, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out, much love guys.